this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Yeah. I'll, I'll be Mike for yes. a second. Oh, my gosh. Pew, 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 pew. Set your phasers to, st- to kill. <laughs> that, was Mike. that was Mike. That was Mike. Yes, Kirk Cousins, 20 for 324, four touchdowns. Somehow was my start of the week this week. <laughs> I take no credit for that. Mike left him sitting there on the table. It was like he came to a, a feast and took the wrong item off. Well, he was Mike's stream of the week early. We oh, said yeah. we said as a group that we really liked his matchup uh, on our Tuesday show last week. He was the first guy we said to get off of waivers, and if you did it, you got the first quarterback of the of the league of the the week. The f- number one quarterback <laughs> is how I would say the that. The first, the first number one quarterback <laughs> is the proper English. And as he would say, "How do you like that? How do you like that?" Oh, Kirk. Yeah. yeah, Kirk Cousins. So, uh, yeah, Mike Mike got off the air, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday, and just said, in his league, he's like, I'm starting Kirk Cousins this week. Yeah. He knew he was streaming him in the beginning. And, and he did. And a he huge picked week. him up and he played him. And- so, he has the Panthers next week. <laughs> yeah, so you you can now drop <laughs> Kirk Cousins. This is uh, what's incredible to me is that the the NFC East is in such a race that Washington's right in it. I mean – they absolutely. are battling right now and you know yeah absolutely they're in it they're i mean J- this is the panthers don't have very many tough matchups ahead people yeah. are talking about yeah is it too early to talk about the panthers going undefeated eh, i don't know but their schedule this is like one of their harder games and it's not all that difficult so you so. know what the panthers do right they employ all wide receivers that wouldn't matter if they had a Julian Edelman injury. <laughs> right, yeah. When they- you just roll another guy named Philly Brown into the lineup and you're fine. There you go. So, yeah, Kirk Cousins next week wouldn't start him against the Panthers in Carolina for sure, but he had a monster game, and hopefully, uh, you know, by the amount of messages on Twitter I got, he won some people some weeks. Absolutely. So, And Jor- some- Jordan Reed did well, too, some so cash. We- we'll get to that. Big Ben did have a huge week, 22 for 379, three touchdowns. As Jason said, the world's best backup. He had a monster week. If you didn't start him, I don't blame you because no one started him. (laughs) You don't start a guy that's not playing. Yeah, so if you did... uh, Shame on you and congratulations. (laughs) Right, right. He does have a bye next week, okay? We didn't mention it in the news. I meant to the Browns, Saints, Giants, and Steelers. The Browns, Saints, Giants, and Steelers are all on bye next week. So... Uh, I'm not going to put it past Big Ben somehow scoring uh, these type of numbers next week on the bye based on what he did as a backup. <laughs> right, maybe. But, but, yeah, I wouldn't start him. Aaron Rodgers is in our stud muffins. He, and I he just don't third, feel like that's fair. Well, he was the third highest scoring fantasy quarterback this week, which is why he's there. I know. You, you saw it a couple weeks ago against Carolina. Carolina, he was terrible. The whole Packers offense was awful. But at the very end of the game, in garbage time, he was able to come back, and he ended up as, I think, like the third highest quarterback that week. So you've got a guy, obviously, an Aaron Rodgers Hall of Fame quarterback, fantastic fantasy option. You can still count on him even if it takes garbage time, but there is clearly a problem with the offense of the Packers. And next week at Minnesota, I'm not liking the the whole game script from a – fantasy perspective there's probably a lot of guys i'm going to start over aaron Rodgers next week really really over him over him wow yeah that was going to be my question i wouldn't i don't think i have it in me to bench him well i'm not saying that you would bench him because he deserves to be benched i'm saying there's probably five quarterbacks next week that will be ranked higher that i exactly that i would rank higher and i would and if they're higher than him in my rankings i would start i mean you know i would just Go with that and start. A lot of issues for that team. Right now, Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams can't get off a pre I mean, can't get off a of man coverage uh, I think very the, often. The Not main... much separation. James Jones has disappeared, literally poofed. I think he's in Disneyland with Mike. <laughs> yeah. I think well, he's on Space Mountain right now. That's the only place he's going to be celebrating. Yes. Yes. So uh did you have something to add? Uh, I think the problem with the offense is Devontae Adams. He ha- has been thrust into the number one role, and he is not a number one wide receiver. He had a decent line, right? It was like 10 for 70. He had 21 targets. He was throwing the ball 21 times and finished with a meh fantasy day. There were three or four times when he had to make a play and didn't. 
Right. I mean, think about it was the, the type of catches that you had to make. He could have tied the game on the two point conversion yeah. at the end. I blame Rodgers for that for sure. Uh, it was catchable. Could have let, let him. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I I pretty much agree with you. He needs to be uh, not the guy, but that's the that's the situation they're in now without Jordy. So it's hurting Rodgers. Cutler, Jay Cutler, once again, big game, huge, huge passing touchdown. Uh, two of them, one to Langford, one to Zach Miller. He had three touchdowns again, and they came in and they pretty much just boat raced the Rams in St. Louis. Did yeah. you see that coming? <laughs> no, I didn't, but I love it. Because if you had, you should have told me I started the Rams D. That wasn't smart. Yeah, well, I you know, I was throwing a little bit of shade on Alshon Jeffrey last week, saying I would start Mike Evans over Alshon um, because the combination of this defense, which you, I think they had only given up two passing touchdowns through the air all year. They gave up three in the first half to Jay Cutler. So, Clearly, we didn't see this coming. None of them went to Alshon, who we'll talk about in a little bit. You know, one of the things that we can point out here, though, since we're talking about quarterbacks, and we prescribe streaming every week, we give you streaming options, because every week it's a different set of guys. Kirk Cousins, Ben Roethlisberger, probably Rodgers, Jay Cutler, and the next guy, Eli Manning, all five of those guys probably are not going to be here next week. I mean, several of them are on by, and they've got terrible. Jay Cutler goes against the Broncos next week. You know, bad matchup. You're probably not going to do it. Kirk Cousins against the against the Panthers. Every week, you got to look for new quarterbacks to plug in there. Yeah, Cutler had a monster game, but you're right. The matchups say that maybe he's not your stream next week, even though he's been kind of consistent lately. And uh, so he's somebody that you need to maybe. Do you put him in the same conversation as Carr at this point? I mean, he's yeah, it's six point. Passing leads, 24, 23, 24, 23, 24, 36. He's a guy that has to be rostered. Yeah. At this point, you're getting late, and you want the streaming options on your bench rather than just relying from the waivers. And so I would pick up Cutler. I just probably wouldn't play him this coming week. All right, so who's next on the uh, the stud muffin list here at quarterback? We got Carson Palmer. Big game late last night against Seattle in Seattle. I mean, you want to talk about a guy – Mike talked about the fact that there has been very little fantasy difference from Carson Palmer between when he faces top-ranked pass defenses and bottom-ranked pass defenses. It's like one point different. And right now, after this game, if it's one point different, it's going to be one point better because he put up 363 yards and three touchdowns in Seattle. So great game from, from Palmer. And then the last guy was uh, my start of the week, Joe Flacco, in uh, a game that you know, you, we, we knew it was going to see a lot of action through the air. Got over 300 yards and three touchdowns as well, playing against the Oakland Raiders. So a lot of good options this week. Yeah, absolutely. And then at the wide receiver position, guys that stood out, stud muffins this week, the big boys, Antonio Brown had another monster game because when him and Big Ben are on the field together, he does this all the time. Brandon Cooks, what do, we, what do you make of Brandon Cooks kind of breakout right now? Because he's had – a fairly consistent run. He he had a big touchdown in this game, five for ninety eight, two touchdowns. What is he going forward? Uh, he's a he's a very good option. He is a wide receiver too. He's a guy that you start week in week out. Uh, two weeks ago, when I had him as my start of the week, I did research between him and Snead because both guys look great, and all the numbers actually said, you know who I really want out of these two? It's Cooks, and we've seen that since then. Snead puts up a goose egg. Uh, Cooks is the guy. Drew Brees has figured it out, but again bye week next week so don't play him yeah yeah it, it, it was an impressive game he's been in double digits for a while now he seems more reliable than he had been in the beginning of the year the offense just kind of hit a wall though in that game that game seemed like it was heading towards shootout and then it was over so martavis bryant monster game for him showing that you know we talked a lot in the beginning of the season do you like the combos right like brown and bryant if they're on a team like that you can i mean I believe the number for Antonio Brown was like he put up a 37-point game in our league, 34. Yeah. Two touchdowns. Well, Martavis Bryant just put up six for 178 and a touchdown. Yeah, if you if you started both of those guys from the same offense in the same game, you had two of the top four wide receivers. That's incredible. Yeah, he had a huge, huge week. Who do they have next week? They have uh, – They have nobody. Right, they're on bye. Yep. So don't start him. A lot of bye weeks. Yeah. All right, Doug Baldwin had a big game against the Cardinals last night, seven for 131. Uh, 134 and a touchdown. You treat them like you treat all Seattle wide receivers, which is... Bench them. Yeah, bench them because you don't expect it to happen 
It's gonna it's gonna be someone every week who has the game, but predicting whether it's Lockett or I will Baldwin say Paul or, Paul Richardson pulled his hammy after kind of seemingly being involved, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr. had four for 104 and a touchdown. Mike Evans was eight for 126, and uh, I don't know how many drops he had. I know he had a few. Yeah, he had a couple. I knew he had a couple that were one would have put him right down in the red zone, but he he came through. They got the win. Cowboys have lost seven straight games, I believe. Eric Decker, uh, not to be forgotten on Thursday Night Football, just keeps Eric Deckering. He's my favorite. He's my favorite player. <laughs> I just, you know, it's like him, you like him, and Alan Hearns to me are the same exact guy on different offenses. They are just, they are the main red zone threat for their team. They're the guys that are looked at, even though they've got other great options in Brandon Marshall and and uh, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. You know who he is to me. He's what Anquan Bolden was when he yeah, was in Arizona with because he's not really a two. It's one A one B. Yeah, absolutely. And he's and you know this when a team he has six catches by the way in four straight weeks, and you know this when a team looks to him in the red zone. When you have a guy that you're willing to look at in the red zone, that's a two. You know you have a one B, not a two. Yep. So he he had a big game, and then who else do we have? Travis, Travis Benjamin, Benjamin bounced back. Great to see with Johnny Manziel in there. It gives you a little bit more faith that if after the bye they come back with Manziel as the starter, they you know, both him uh, and Barnage uh, both had decent games with Manziel. So a little bit more faith in the passing options despite the quarterback change. All right, here's one I got wrong, guys. Jeremy Langford. Well, you got him right a week early. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't see this coming against no. St. Louis's defense in St. Louis with the the possibility that Forte was going to be there or not. You know, I, I think we all thought he'd be out, but I didn't see this coming. A absolute monster game from Langford, 20 for 73 and a touchdown on the ground, but more importantly, 7 for 109 and a touchdown through the air. Just pretty much a dominant performance by the entire offense there, minus one player that we'll get to in a little bit. But Langford... What do you even do with him as a fantasy owner? Because you know Forte's coming back. Mike said last week Forte just steps right back in. I completely agree with that. It doesn't mean he won't have a little ancillary role, but you don't. I mean, what do you do? Uh, you start him. If Forte is back, you don't start him. He could still be okay. I mean, we saw earlier in the year he vultured a couple touchdowns from Forte. So he could be used in that role, but I don't want to. I don't want to trust that. I would expect against the Broncos, Forte sits one more week and – even though it's a good, tough matchup, at this point, you have to put Langford as a running back one next week against the Broncos if Forte's out. Speaking of running back ones next week, Char West has to be. Absolutely. He plays, the, uh, he plays the Chargers next week, and their porous run defense. This week, he was 24 for 69 and a touchdown, and then through the air, 3 for 91 and a touchdown. Yeah, and Niall Davis wasn't even the backup. He to, was inactive. Yeah, I mean, Niall Davis was was a healthy scratch. That's because they have plenty of faith in West. Charkandrick West is the guy, and he's running, you know, he's he's making people forget a little bit about Jamal Charles because he's doing if, enough. If you went and grabbed him as the Charles owner, you're pretty happy right now. Absolutely. The same way that you are. If you're a Forte owner and you grab Lankford and you get those two games out of it, just – this is why heading into the playoffs, we've been saying this the last like week or two, if you're headed to the playoffs, this is time to get your handcuffs now because these guys can step up when your stud goes down and you've got a guy to play that could step up and be big. For instance, if you are a Marshawn Lynch owner, you might want to sign Thomas Rawls off the waiver wire Yeah, when Lynch is dealing with abdominal... <laughs> abdominal. <laughs> the abdominal <laughs> snowman. Yes, yes, that's... Uh, or if you're the Lamar Miller owner, the next, you know, one of the next guys on our list, you grab a Jai. So let me let me get some perspective there on West real quick. Rest of season, I want you to answer some of these for me. Char West or Lamar Miller? I think I'm gonna <laughs> go I think I'm gonna go Char West because he doesn't have anybody behind him that could really impede his carries. He's been playing great. And I think Ajayi, as the season goes on, could get more and more involved. Char West or Christopher Ivory. That's that's tough. I, I I'm I'm going to go with Ivory surprisingly, I think, because his red zone usage has just been fantastic. They're a team where if they get on the goal line, they're going to give him the chance to score. And he he looked fresh to me this last week. He gets 10 days of rest. So, Char West, last one. Char West or Justin Forsett? 
I will go for set on that. For sets usage, he didn't have a very good week this week, but his usage has been great. The offense moves. He's involved in the passing game, so um, I'm going to go for set. All right, big games from Adrian Peterson. If you've heard of him, 26 for 203 and a touchdown. Lamar Miller had another good game. Not so much on the ground. He was out care or uh, out yardaged. That's a, a professional phrase, right? Oh there. yeah. Out yardaged by Jay Ajayi despite ten less carries. He was sixteen for forty three, but he did get six for fifty and a touchdown through the air to salvage his fantasy day. Well, we've seen this a lot this year from Lamar Miller. His usage in the passing game is what gives you confidence in starting him because he's he's game flow kind of proof right now, so long as they don't destroy someone and take him out of the game. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on Friday. LaShawn McCoy had a big game. Love McCoy moving forward. Yeah. As long as he can stay healthy, which has been a problem. Jonathan Stewart, another game with 20-plus carries, another productive game, got into the end zone. He, he had a couple other end zone chances oh, that man. He, he missed out on. He had that early touchdown, and I was worried because we have the water bet between LaShawn McCoy and Jonathan Stewart, and I was worried at the beginning. But LaShawn McCoy... He finished ahead. So, so you get, I get wet. wet. With the Wheel of Water. Uh, there were a bunch of uh, videos that came through this weekend. Oh, they're so good. So great. if you take, if you have, it, it makes sense, right? Like if you made a bunch of bets with people and the weekend happened and the games happened and you're going to pay those out, videotape them and then post them to Twitter and use the hashtag Wheel of Water. And we will retweet those and enjoy them immensely. There was another English channel <laughs> water bet, which is just the best to watch. Yeah. So people, my children were playing with the app just for fun and they got an English channel. And so I got to watch Jersey. My oh, they did it to daughter. one another. Yep. Yeah. Caleb was playing with it this weekend and he goes, uh, if, if you did this to me, that'd be fun. Right. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, you can go ahead and spin the wheel, buddy. So, all right, let's move on now to the tight end position where Zach Miller is, is just, is Coming he, out of nowhere. <laughs> is he the next Gary Barnage? Uh, he was the first Gary Barnage. Well, long ago. But, I mean, Zach Miller, he had that incredible catch last week of that bullet pass. Then I've this got an week, easy answer for you. Great. No. Yeah, I know. The answer is no. That is an easy, easy answer. He's not even the main target, generally speaking, on that offense for the tight end position. Martellus Bennett's there. One of Zach Miller's long touchdown runs was kind of a broken play by the defense. It they was ran just into a, one another, yeah. and he burst through. It was kind of strange to watch. It was like a 70-yard touchdown. I believe it was 87 yards. Wow. I think it was an 87-yard touchdown. It was touchdown. long. So Yeah, and and the truth is, is I say no because he has a total of 10 catches on the entire season. He has all of his fantasy production in the past two weeks from touchdowns. And big play, yes, don't panic, Martellus owners. Don't panic and go sign Zach Miller and drop Martellus Bennett or do something crazy. Agreed. But credit where credit is due, huge gains from Zach Miller. Very, very good games. Now, Rob Gronkowski. If he's on your waivers, sign him. <laughs> he should be on every roster. He's right. Very good. Right, right. Uh, Gronk, another big game. Jordan Reed was Mike's start of the week, and he got it done with touchdowns. Yeah. In zone touchdowns. <laughs> the nonetheless. best kind. Uh, he got two touchdowns, three for 29, rule 86. If Jordan Reed is healthy, you play him. Yeah, and then Brent Selleck, four for 100. Uh, he's in the Zach Miller category here where he had a big game. It just goes to show that right now you can't trust the tight end of Philly. Right, for sure. And then Gary Barnage, nice bounce back game for him, six for 65 and a touchdown. An he's highly targeted. It's, it's also That was an important game being with Manziel. Now you can trust him regardless of the quarterback. All right.